oscillators can provide various signals as their output. One of those are sinusoidal signals at the output of sinusoidal oscillators. There are several ways of creating sinusoidal oscillations. Two of them are shown here as a parallel RLC oscillator and a series RLC oscillator. The so-called RLC oscillation tank is the network either in parallel or in series as suggested by the name. The characteristic time constant of those components are defining the oscillation frequency and the necessary gain to fulfill the Barkhausen criterion is provided by an amplifier which also provides the minus sign from the summation point as it can be an inverting amplifier. So in the case of the parallel RLC oscillator, we use the output voltage of the amplifier applied across the RLC network and feed it back into the input of the amplifier, where the RLC network is providing minus 180 degrees phase shift from the L and the C, and the other 180 degree phase shift from the minus sign come from the amplifier. In case of the series oscillator, we're using the current through the components, again the C and the L along the way in the loop here, change the sign of the current by 180 degree, and we feed that current back into the amplifier, which has the necessary negative gain to make the circuit oscillate at one frequency only, which is determined by the size of the inductor and the capacitor. The quality of the oscillator is defined by the R, which can be seen in the spectrum on how the amplitude actually looks around the oscillation frequency. A widely used oscillator to generate clocks for digital circuits is the Culpitz oscillator. The digital circuits, the microcontrollers, graphical processing units, FPGAs, or any other kind of digital electronics contain an inverter created by the MOSFET M1 and M2, and they get the supply voltages VDD and VSS through their external pins. Furthermore, they have two pins to connect the oscillator circuit. M1 is a P-channel MOSFET here, and M2 is an N-channel MOSFET. So if the signal at the input, which is common for both of those MOSFETs, goes high, M1 turns off, M2 turns on, and the signal at the output goes low. And the external oscillator circuit provides us with another 180 degree phase shift by the parasitic components through the model of that crystal here. The electrical symbol for circuit diagrams of a crystal looks like that. The physical principle behind it is actually the conversion of electrical energy into mechanical energy, that is into vibration in case of oscillators and back into electrical energy. That physical principle can be modeled through an RLC circuit that looks like that, containing two capacitances, one inductor and one resistor. And we are mainly interested in the inductor and the series capacitor to create the oscillation frequency. And we have to live with the parasitic capacitor in parallel. An advantage of those crystals is that the resistance is extremely low, so we get a very pure oscillation. That means that the variation of the oscillation frequency is extremely small, and therefore we can generate precise and high frequency clocks. The lowest frequencies for crystal oscillators are around 2 to 3 megahertz, and the higher frequency ranges end up at around hundreds of megahertz. We can also generate the 180 degrees phase shift by numerous other circuits 
as long as we use capacitors and inductors which are capable of turning the phase by 90 degrees. In this case here, we have a phase shift oscillator which is turning the phase three times by minus 90 degree through the CR high pass filters ending up in minus 270 degrees and the amplifier is providing us with another minus 180 degree of phase shift. So at one frequency we are crossing the minus 180 and if the gain is at least one there, the circuit oscillates at that frequency.